There are a couple of things that you need to have straight before you start writing your queries. And so what we're going to do, we're kind of going to split this across to two videos. We'll talk about um, some of the things you should know before you begin. And then in the next video, it somewhat continues by how to take the guesswork out of writing queries. So let's get into it here. A couple of things you want to know before you start writing your queries. You want to have or you might need to have a database diagram. Okay, I'll talk about what that is here in just a second. You also want to have or might need to have a data dictionary. Now, those two elements are very important. I wouldn't say they're, they're critical. It depends on your mind. Some people can keep a lot of this stuff in their mind and there's really no uh, there's no need to require a visual element or a document if you can just do it all in your mind. You got 10 tables for example and it's a fairly inelegant or a fairly simple database then you know that's fine what do you need all that stuff for okay but I think the vast majority of us as SQL developers, SQL query artists and I include myself uh, in this need help and so that's where these two particular elements come into play. Okay, so let's talk about what these are and let's see some examples. Okay. So let's do database diagrams first. The database diagram is either a picture or a document that contains visual elements in it that describe the relationships and the metadata of a database. Okay, so there's a lot of different types. The only one I'm really going to cover here is the ones that you and I can do inside of Management Studio. It's going to be one of our exercises is we're going to create our own database diagrams. So here's just an example of one of the ones you can create within the Management Studio. This is awesome. I mean, you can see this is somewhat of a zoomed in view, but you can see the two tables that we have. We can see they are related. This right here denotes a foreign key. And when you're looking at this, we'll see this a little bit later, there's uh, some alliteration that I always use to remember this. Primary key points to parent. Okay. So when you see that little infinity symbol and you see the uh, primary key symbol, that's a foreign key. Primary key points to the parent. So what this tells us, this particular relationship, if we were to put it into words, it would say something to this effect here. Let me move it down here. A customer sorry, may have zero or more addresses. So in other words, a parent does not have to have children. That's okay. But if they do have a child over there, they can have more than one, right? That's what the little infinity symbol that you see right here says. This is what we would call, and we'll talk about cardinality a little bit later, a one-to-many relationship. I'm going to hold off until we get to joins to really discuss too much detail about foreign keys. We'll come back and talk about what those are. Uh, but looking at this, what's the primary key of the customer address table? Yep, right there. So these two guys right here. You could see the little icon for those. Right? Remember what, what it's called when you have a primary key or really any key that's multi-column? We call it a composite key. Remember? See, it's good to know these things from Chapter 1, those little terms. So that's kind of what a database diagram looks like. What I will usually do is I'll spit them out on the printer and I'll tape them all together and hang them up on my wall. I think that's the way that most of us do this. I am a visual thinker and I it really makes a big difference for me to visualize and to see these relationships. So to me it's the first step. I go and I create my database diagram uh, using Management Studio, then I print it out, then I tape it all together, I get my highlighter out, and I put it on my wall. And from there, I start my work. But I do that before I start writing my first queries, okay? because it helps me understand the database. So don't be afraid to get your own database diagram. I'm going to show you how to create them here. We're going to have an exercise that will do this coming up soon.
Okay, so we'll do that for the Learn It First works. Now let's talk about a data dictionary. The data dictionary serves the purpose of describing the database. Uh, and it does a lot of things. What does the table names mean? What are all of the abbreviations in a table name? What do they mean? What does this column name mean? What's its purpose here? Uh, what does this relationship exist to do? Like, you know, we might want to, well, I, I don't want to get into it till we get too much, like I said, into Chapter 5 when we talk about our foreign keys. But there are many times that you have specific things in a database, and this is your documentation. Your data dictionary is the documentation for the how and the why of a database. Why is it that we have to always enter the data in this format in the table? That should be listed in the data dictionary. Right? Now, I've got an example just showing you here. That, you know, For simple databases, this can just be a text file. For large projects, this tends to be a very, very expensive piece of software that creates this kind of stuff, right? But this is an example showing the columns in a single table here. You can see a couple of things like um, over here we've got uh, this is uh, explaining why this is the natural key but not the, for, not the primary key. Uh, this talks about the relationship. Uh, this talks about what that value actually is. You can see this column here has the foreign keys and it describes which table that contains the parent and which column in the table. Okay. So this is some good info. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can create your own data dictionaries. Unfortunately, none of those are built into the management studio. Uh, there's a lot of great third-party tools, including the one I used to create uh, that particular data dictionary. I, I, I will say, I know some of you are saying, well, what, what was that tool? That looked awesome. I wish I could create one. Look, I'm not a big fan of, and I've said it, I think, already in Chapter 1, of endorsing third-party products in my videos. I think I've done it once or twice. Uh, my reasoning behind that is I like to be vendor independent. I don't want to be beholden to anyone thinking that I have to say nice things about this one product because they're paying me or because they're giving me a license. I just assume buy the software and then say what I want to say about it. So it's just a, a choice. I'm sorry. I know some of you probably would like to know how I created that because I did use a third-party product. But it's just my own little way. Sorry if it hurts. <laughs> uh, but I will say also, generally speaking, the data dictionary is not as useful to me as the database diagram. And the logic behind that is I'm more of a visual thinker. The data dictionary is where I would go after I've looked at the database diagram and I can't find what I need. And then after I've called up somebody, my project lead or whoever I'm working with, and I've asked them, hey, why did you guys make this decision? And then well, if they still can't tell me, okay, I've got to dig down through the database, through the data dictionary. This thing might be hundreds of pages. I don't want to go through hundreds of pages if I could just do it in a phone call. But there, you know, for your larger databases, you're going to work with them. Okay, so database diagrams, data dictionaries, covered those. Got to have that. Let's now do our last little lecture video here before we actually start creating and working with our own and getting into the management studio here. Let's talk about how you can write the queries the first time.